What is going on everybody, Julio here. And today, I'm starting an introduction to HTML video series. I've designed this series in a way that each aspect of HTML will have its own individual video lesson. My goal is to break down these concepts into smaller pieces that are easier to digest, as opposed to one really long video lesson that just covers everything. At the end of this series, you're going to utilize all the knowledge that you gained to build the HTML markup for this personal portfolio website. Upon completion of this video series, you will have a solid understanding of what HTML is and how it works. Now, without further ado, let's jump right into it. In the first lesson, we will focus on the HTML document structure, as well as installing basic software that is needed to write and test our code. So, what is HTML? HTML is an acronym that stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It is a markup language that tells web browsers how to structure the web pages you visit. HTML consists of a series of elements that you can use to enclose, wrap, or mark up different parts of content to make it appear or behave in a certain manner. However, as I said before, before we can continue learning HTML, we have to do two things. The first is installing a web browser and a text editor. If you already know what those things are, you can go ahead and skip ahead. A web browser not only allows us to surf the internet, but it can also help us test and debug our HTML. You are most likely already using a web browser and whatever it is you're using is completely fine. However, my browser of choice is Google Chrome. Again, you don't have to use the same browser that I use, but just keep in mind that the likes of Google Chrome and Firefox are the top two web browsers in terms of keeping up with the latest web development features. If you're not already using Google Chrome and you wish to download it, visit the following website. Click the download Chrome button and follow the on-screen installation prompts. The next step is installing a text editor. A text editor is a piece of software that allows us to write code. Most operating systems already have a built-in basic text editor. However, this is not ideal for writing code since it does not have all the features that a high-level text editor has that allow us to write code much faster and in an organized manner. My text editor of choice is Visual Studio Code. If you already have a text editor that you prefer using, that is completely fine. But for those of you that don't, to download Visual Studio Code, visit the following website. Click on the download for it button, depending on which operating system you're on and follow the on-screen installation prompts. Once the installation finishes, go ahead and launch Visual Studio Code. Once launched, let's customize it a little bit by installing a few extensions and changing some settings. So let's navigate to the extensions tab and search for live server. It's going to be the first result by Ritwick Day. And what this extension does is that it will allow us to launch a local server environment. And it also has a really cool feature that is called live reload. And then in conjunction with autosave, we can see the changes that we make to the HTML file as they're happening live. So let's go ahead and go into the settings and look for autosave. And then we want to turn this on and set it to after delay. So that's going to automatically save the file after one second. Then if we go back to the extensions tab, we are going to install some other extensions. Uh, they are completely optional, but if you want to make your editor look like mine, go ahead and look for the Dracula theme. Then once you install it, all you have to do is just click on set theme. The other extension is going to be for the icon files. So you're going to look for VS Code icons, and then you're just going to install it as well. And that's pretty much as far as we are going to go when it comes to customizing Visual Studio Code. There's a lot more to it, but we are going to keep it basic for now. Now that we have set up Visual Studio Code, let's go ahead and create our first HTML file. You can call your file anything you'd like as long as it ends with the .html file extension. The only exception is going to be your home page. This will always be called the index. As you can also tell, I'm in here within a folder called intro to HTML. So we're going to create another folder by clicking this icon and we're going to call it document structure. Inside of this folder, we are now going to click this other button to create a new file. And now we can go ahead and name this index.html. So 
How is the HTML document structured? First, let's start by specifying the doc type. Without getting too technical, simply put, the doc type just tells the web browser the type of document to expect. This may look like an HTML element, but it isn't. It's just a special kind of node. Next, we have the HTML element itself. The HTML element is the root element for the HTML document. It is the parent of the head and the body elements, containing everything in the HTML document other than the doc type. If it's omitted, it will always be implied, but it is important to include it, as this is the element on which the language of the content of the document is declared. The HTML element will also use a lang attribute. This attribute defines the main language of the document. In this case, we use en for English. The language declaration enables screen readers, search engines, and translation services to know the document language. In a later lesson, we will go more in depth about HTML attributes, but for now, we're just gonna focus on the document structure. Nested between the opening and closing HTML tags, we find the main two children, the head and the body elements. The head element acts as a container for everything you want to include in the HTML page that is not content visible to the viewers. This can include things such as keywords, a page description that would appear in search results, CSS to style the content, character set declarations, and much more. We will learn more in depth about this metadata in the next lesson. For now, let's just go ahead and add the title element this element is going to set the title of the page, which is the title that appears in the browser tab when the page is loaded in. The page title is also used to describe the page when it's bookmarked. To test this, let's open our HTML file within the browser. To do so, right click on the index.html file and click on open with live server. Now we can see that the title we gave this file is visible on the tab. Next, we have the body element. This element contains all the content that displays on the page, including text, images, videos, games, playable audio tracks, and whatever else. Let's go ahead and render some text on the page by using the H1 heading element. For now, you don't need to understand this element. We will go over it in a dedicated lesson later on when we learn about the text fundamentals. If we take a look at our index.html file within the browser, Notice that the document now says hello world. This is just a basic example of how the body element is used to render information that we want to display to the user. This lesson is already getting a little bit longer than I would like. So what I'll do is end the video here and in the next lesson we will learn more in depth about the head element and its metadata.